So on today's podcast, I want to talk about something that has been bothering me for a while now. And I've really hesitated to say something because I don't want it to come out wrong and I don't want it to come across as too negative. And it's a little controversial because you see there's something that is going on within the Christian blogosphere, in the Christian community online, where a lot of people are really clinging to this mindset and this belief that truly is not biblical. And I am worried that it is leading you to believe the wrong things and behave the wrong ways. And it's not helping you. And I want to talk about that. And what I am referring to here is those social media graphics and memes and even blog posts that tell you, you are wonderful. You are awesome. It's totally fine if you feel like your life is falling apart because it's not. You're wonderful. Give yourself so much grace. Mama, you are doing great. You are doing wonderful. You got this. You are awesome. Now, of course, those seem like such positive, happy, uplifting messages, but I am concerned that they are hurting more than helping us. And if you want to know why, definitely stay tuned through this whole thing as I kind of explain and unpack why that's not really biblical and what our biblical approach should be instead. All right, so do you know which pictures and blog posts I am talking about here? I don't want to call anybody out by giving examples um, because it's just so widespread among Christians today. Um, I don't want to hate on any one particular person. We are all guilty of this, and I'm sure I have tons of these pictures on the Equipping Godly Women Facebook page as well. But basically, I just mean those pictures and images to say, you are awesome, you are wonderful, you got this, it's totally fine, you know, however you feel, because just know you are awesome. Well, there's some truth to that in the fact that God made us and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. However, it really leaves out an entire chunk of the gospel and it focuses so much on one little part to the exclusion of everything else. Take Romans 3.23, for example. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Or what about Isaiah 64.6? which says all of us have become like one who is unclean and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Or what about 1 John 1, 8, which says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, I know these seem really negative, but bear with me because there is a point to all of this. The thing is, when we say, on social media or wherever, you are wonderful, you are awesome, you are great. It's only part of the story. Yes, we are, but there's also this other half where we are sinners in need of God's grace. We don't come out of the womb wonderful and perfect. We come out selfish and prideful and full of all of these sins and we develop all of this baggage over our lives and we just have so much junk in our lives. Now, I know there are verses like, 2 Corinthians 5.17, which says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. And that does sound way more optimistic. And yes, you are a new creation. You are uh, all brand new and your sin is washed clean. And that is true too. However, there's a very important part of this verse that we often miss. It says, if anyone is in Christ, it doesn't say just by yourself, just because, just because we feel like being kind and encouraging you are wonderful it says if you are in Christ if you are so close to him if you have your life intertwined with his if you are going God's way then not just because but then you are a new creation second of all messages like these simply don't help. Instead, they're kind of like a band-aid. So as we go through life, we all have things that hurt us or stress us. And the appropriate response would be to figure out what is the stress and to figure out, you know, what's causing it, what can we do to fix it, you know, ask for God's help, of course, but okay, let's do something about it. But instead of taking the stresses that we have, like the loneliness and the insecurity and just the stress of day-to-day -day life, instead of getting to the root problem and dealing with them, we're just slapping band-aids on it. We're saying, you're okay, you're wonderful, everything is good. And the thing is, sometimes everything is not good. And just telling everybody, oh, you're wonderful, you're okay, you're fine, don't worry, 
Maybe we do need to worry. Maybe there are things going on in your heart that you do need to worry about, or not necessarily worry, but maybe there are things going on in your life that you do need to address. And in order to kind of illustrate this, I'm going to share with you a little story. So this was two summers ago, um, and my husband and I were just going through a rough season. Um, but I didn't really understand why. And it was very frustrating to me because I could see that he was very upset and something was really bothering him, but I didn't know what was bothering him. And it seemed like nothing should have been bothering him. And I remember feeling annoyed and I was like, why can't he just see everything is wonderful. We're married. We have kids. We, you know, we have everything in the world. What, you know, why aren't you just, just be happy. And it's like, I wanted to give him these little messages that say, you know, be happy. Everything's wonderful. And, you know, be thankful for what you have and all these really positive little band-aids to fix it. Um, because I couldn't figure out why in the world are you not happy with our situation? Everything is fine and everything is perfect. And honestly, it's just annoying to me because you're being grouchy. But and then I ended up going to a Christian conference where I really just met face to face with God. And he showed me some things that I were that I was doing in my marriage that were really hurting my marriage and were hurting him. And I wasn't doing them on purpose. I had no idea. I didn't mean to do these things. I had good intentions, but I was very much doing things that were causing him hurt. And it was like, as I was in this time of worship, the scales just fell off my eyes to realize, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I am hurting him. I am doing harmful things to our marriage. And somebody could have come up to me right then and said, no, you're fine. You're doing a good job. You're doing great. You're doing wonderful. You're trying your best. You know, how could you be expected to do more? You have little kids, you have all, you know, you work and you do all these things. And they could have told me nice messages that would have made me feel better for the minute. Like, okay, fine. You know, she says I'm doing good, but that's not what happened. Instead, I actually sat in the prayer room and I prayed to God, God, I need to work through this. I need to fix it. I don't want to do this anymore please send somebody my way that can walk through this with me. And I prayed this prayer and then I went about my day for about an hour later and didn't think anything of it. And about an hour or two later, somebody came up to me at this conference and they said, hey, I just felt like I needed to come talk to you. And I was like, hi, I have been expecting you. I prayed that God would send somebody and look, here you are. Um, and I told her what was going on and I said, okay, here's what's going on. I'm doing things in my marriage that are hurting my husband, that are hurting our marriage. And I feel really bad about this and I don't want to do this anymore. And I want to change and I don't know how to change. I That scares me. I don't know how to make these changes that I know I need to make. And I just laid it all out there and I was just honest. And you know, this is everything that's going on. And she didn't say, oh no, you're fine. And said, she looked right at me and she said, you know what, Brittany, what you are doing is sin. And I was like, gosh, like, that's not what anybody ever wants to hear. Like, oh, you're a horrible, terrible, bad sinner. But she looked right at me and she said, you know what? What you're doing is sin. What you were doing is wrong. But that's good news. And I was like, how could this possibly be good news? Like, I want to hear that, you know, everything is good and it's not my fault and it's not so bad. How in the world is it good news that what I am doing is sin? And then she continued and she said, well, the reason that that's good news is because we have a savior. So that when we sin, we can go to him and he fixes it. And I was like, oh yeah, oh my gosh. Like, how could you even forget about that? It's like the entire gospel, but I had forgotten about it because I was so busy myself trying to think of how am I going to fix it? How am I going to do things? How am I going to be a good wife? And she was like, you don't have to do those things. What you need to do is recognize you're a sinner. That's step number one. She said, that's good news that you recognize that, that you see that in your life. That's good news. Because when you recognize that and when you see that in your life, you can take it to God and he covers that and he forgives you and he strengthens you and he encourages you and he helps you to fix it. And I was like, okay, I guess that is really good news. Like it doesn't feel good to hear. I want to hear I'm doing wonderful. I want to do it here. It's not my fault. I want to hear like, I'm great. I'm a really good wife. And you know, these like really low standards that we set, those are good enough. But that's not the truth. And when we share these messages, not that there isn't some truth in them, but we completely forget the gospel. And the gospel is not that you are wonderful. The gospel is not about you at all. The gospel is about the fact that in our brokenness, when we are hurt, when things aren't going our way, when there are things that need to be fixed, that we can go to God and be honest and say, you know what? I'm really struggling in this area. And that God can forgive us 
and he can strengthen us and he can show us a better path going forward. So that's really the reason why I don't like those messages. Not that we don't need encouragement because we do, you know, life is hard and we all, you know, face insecurities. But when you are facing these insecurities and when you are going through things, don't just slap a bandaid on it and say, oh no, it's fine, I'm good. Get to the root of the issue, figure out what's going on, and then take it to God and let him help you and let him heal you. Um, all these messages, it's really so self-centered to say, oh, it's all about me. I'm wonderful. I am awesome. And the truth is we are sinners. We make mistakes. Every single person that is alive, that has ever been alive, you know, with an exception, um, is a sinner. We make mistakes. We have baggage. We have hurts. And instead of just saying, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Just forget about it. Get to the root of the issue in prayer with help of a godly friend. If you are feeling lonely, don't go read messages that say you're wonderful. If your house is a hot mess and you are totally stressed, don't go read messages that say you're wonderful. Get to the root of the issue. If your parenting is driving you bonkers and you can't deal with your kids and they make you want to drink or eat chocolate or binge watch Netflix, whatever your vice is, um, if you are having those conflicts, don't read a nice little post that's going to say, it's cool, you're fine, you're wonderful, you're doing your best. Yes, we need messages like that sometimes, but the real message that we need is the message of the gospel, which says when we are hurting, when we are not enough, because we are not enough. If we were enough, we could earn heaven ourselves. We could earn a wonderful life ourselves, but it's not up to us and it's not supposed to be up to us. In our brokenness, what we need to do is to go to God and say, I'm just going to lay it all out there. I am broken. I am dealing with this. I have this sin in my life and I cannot get it together on my own. But when you go to God, he fixes it. So let me ask you, what areas in your life do you need that motivation from today? And how can you go and find them from God instead of from man? Is your parenting stressing you out right now? Instead of going and reading those nice parenting messages that you follow, take some time, sit down and say, okay, what is really going on? And this is what I had to do two summers ago. I literally went to the prayer room and I sat down with my notebook and I said, okay, what is going on? And I wrote out, and I have an article about this too, about how to take every thought captive to Christ. And I'll link that below. But what I did is, okay, what are the lies I am believing? What are the things that I am believing? You know, do they line up with scripture? What am I doing? Is it working? you know, just getting really honest. Okay, here's exactly what is going on and getting honest and getting it all out there because as long as you're leaving these things inside of you where they can kind of hide, they're gonna fester, but get them out. Okay, what is the truth of the situation? What is going on? Does this line up with God's word? What do I actually need to do with it? So you're not saying, you know, my house is a total mess, but it's fine. You're saying, okay, my house is a total mess, why? What is going on that is making this happen? Is it because I am being too lazy? And it's terrible to actually say that to people, but that's what we need sometimes is that kick in the pants and that's why I'm here. If you, and I mean, you guys have told me yourself, if you are too lazy, then you don't need someone saying, it's fine, you need someone to come to you and love and say, you know what? And you can say this to yourself, but you know what? You're being lazy, you need to get your butt off the couch. Or is it, you know, you have some hurts right now that you're dealing with that are debilitating you from being able to handle other things? Okay, then let's deal with those hurts. Let's not mask them um, with Netflix and Instagram or whatever you do or cookies. Let's not mask them. Let's feel them. Let's deal with them. Let's get them out there. Find a godly friend that you can talk to and work through these things. What else is stressing you out in your life? Are you trying to lose weight and you can't? So instead of following all these positive messages to say, you're wonderful just the way you are. Well, you know, your God did create your body. That's awesome. But it's up to you to take care of it. Are you taking care of it? If not, what do you need to do about it? How can you fix that? Don't just say, oh no, we're fine because you know in your brain you're not fine. And if things are not fine, it does not help you to say you're fine, you're wonderful. If things are not fine, if there is some kind of deeper reason or a thing that is hurting you, then get it out, figure out what it is, sit down with a paper, sit down with a friend, sit down in prayer and say, okay, what is really the root of the issue? What is causing this? And when we take these issues that we're dealing with and we figure out the root cause and the root reason, then we can take that to Christ and then he can help us and he can heal us and we can take those steps going forward and that's awesome. And honestly, I'm so glad that 
God sent somebody my way two years ago to say, you know what? What you were doing is wrong. Because if somebody had come and said, no, you're doing fine, I would have gone home and I would have said, I'm doing fine. It's not my problem. It's not my fault. It's not my responsibility. He needs to figure it out and he needs to deal with it. But instead, because God brought somebody to me to say, you know what? You are messing up. You are sinning. You are dropping the ball. Then I was able to say, okay, I'm the one who's messing up. I'm the one who's dropping the ball. But that means I'm the one who can fix this with God's help, of course. So my question for you today, what areas of your life are you trying to put a band-aid on things? Whether that's through positive messages or just coping mechanisms, um, drinking wine, hanging out on social media, scrolling when you should be interacting with your family. Where are the places you're trying to put a band-aid on it? Where you're trying to say, it's okay, it's all good, I'm happy, you know, everything's fine, I'm good enough. Where God says, you know what? you're not good enough in that area. I'm calling you to more. I have so much more for you. If you would stop with the coping mechanisms and you would stop with all of these putting band-aids on things and you would step up, step to the plate and walk in my truth. What are the areas in your life today and what steps do you need to take to make that happen? If this resonates with you at all and you have things that are coming up definitely leave a comment for me below. I have tons of resources on the blog. I will try to get you articles. Even if I don't have them, I can get you from other people that will help you in your situation specifically. Absolutely leave a comment. And I'm also going to leave a bunch of links in the description below. So um, you can get some of these resources as you start to walk through things to figure out what's really going on. What are my next steps? What do I need to do to take action? rather than just sitting and putting a band-aid on it. And I know that these articles and resources are going to help you. So definitely go right now and check those out. And I hope um, that this has been helpful and that you can have some kind of real life change because of it.